أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved Messenger, the peak of His creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Allahumma salli ala And may God's peace and blessings be upon the pure family of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. May Allah hasten His reappearance and make us all amongst His sincere and dedicated servants. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have honored the children of Adam and we have carried them on land and on sea. And we have given them from our good sustenance. And we have preferred them, favored them over many of our creations. Sadaqallahu al-Aliyyul Azim. Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat. Many people have wondered throughout history, where did we come from? Are we the only human race that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created? Or were there human races before us? What is our origin? Were there any human beings before Prophet Adam alayhi salam on the face of this planet? As science continues, to reveal more and more about our past. More fossils are being examined. The remains of human-like figures are examined. People are wondering, what's going on? What happened in the past? Did we evolve from some species, from those early Homo sapiens, or are we only the progeny of Prophet Adam alayhi salam? And he did not evolve from any species. He was directly created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an interesting question that many people are wondering about, especially in our modern times. Let us explore this issue, this question, by examining these four points. Number one, does the Holy Quran speak about a special status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, the human beings, to the progeny of Prophet Adam alayhi salam. And with this special status, is there a responsibility that we have? Number two, was there a creation? Was there humans before Prophet Adam alayhi salam? Number three, does the theory of evolution contradict the Holy Quran, the narrations that we have? Is there any discrepancy between modern science and the religious teachings that we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam alayhi salam directly? And number four, what happened after Prophet Adam alayhi salam? Many people wonder if God created only Prophet Adam and his wife Eve, Hawa, and they had sons and daughters, how did they get married? Who did they get married? Were there people on earth whom they married? How did the line and the progeny of Prophet Adam salam continue? Let us begin by examining the first point. Is there a special status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon the human being in the Holy Quran? If you go to Surah Al-Isra, Verse number 70, there is a beautiful verse and I consider this verse to be amongst the most profound verses of the Holy Quran. 
It is indeed a bone chilling verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in verse 70 of Surah Al Isra, or another name of this chapter is Bani Israel. We have honored the children of Adam. We've carried them on sea, on the land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the means, for example, to explore the oceans through the ships and the vessels that we have. We have given them from our good sustenance. The wonderful rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly and strongly saying in this verse that we have preferred, favored the progeny of Adam over other creations, many of other God's creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a special status. What is this special status? How is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the human being over other creations? The exegetes of the Holy Quran, the Mufassireen, those who do the tafsir of the Holy Quran, they have several opinions here. For example, one opinion says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the human being by giving him the ability to walk upright on two feet. There are only a few animals who are capable of doing that. And when you look at the you know, evolutionary evidence that some scientists are bringing forward, they say that as the early you know, homo sapiens were evolving, the fact that they were able to walk upright on two feet represented a turning point in the history of, human, in the, of the human race. It enabled them to build the civilizations that we, to, that we see today. It's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has enabled the human being to walk upright on two feet. Imagine if you had to walk on four legs, like most of the animals. Life would be very different. We could not undertake many of the activities that we do by walking on two feet upright. So maybe this verse is a reference to this special gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given humanity. You have another group of scholars who believe no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the human being by giving him his hands, his fingers, and especially the thumb. You know how important this thumb is, brothers and sisters? I once saw a short documentary that said human beings could not build a civilization without the thumb. Appreciate the thumb that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. When you look at the history of humankind and how they progress to develop tools, you cannot develop those tools and use them so precisely and efficiently without your thumb. Imagine if you did not have the thumb. Could you comfortably grab that iPhone and play around with it day and night? And by the way, when your thumb starts to hurt and it's strained, you know how much you've used it on your iPhone. The thumb is an amazing miracle. If you did not have this thumb, believe me, the pyramids in Egypt could not have been built. A lot of the aspects that we have in our history and civilization could not have been built. Just ask the scientists and they tell you the blessings of this thumb. So this verse could be a reference to this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human being and honored him with it. Whereas you see many animals, they lack this blessing. They are not able to operate and use a tool or an object the way we human beings can. This is the second opinion. There is a third more correct opinion which says yes, all these are all great blessings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ability to walk on our two feet, the thumb and the fingers and the hands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But these are physical blessings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have honored and elevated the children of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to something more than a mere physical blessing. Scholars say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distinguished the human being. 
and has favored the human being over other creations through the power of the intellect. The aql that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. The power of reason for us to contemplate and understand and perceive. For us to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tafdeel that the Holy Quran speaks about. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Allah has given you a tool that no other creation has. And this tool is the power of the intellect. Which animal shares with you the intellect that you have? The size of the brain that we have? Even when you look at the angels, yes, they do have the power of the intellect, but they don't have the free will that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly endowed the human being. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And that's through the power of the intellect. Now with this special status comes a heavy price. There comes a big responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not simply give you the power of the intellect, this great amazing blessing which no one else shares with you. And He leaves you without expecting anything from you. In turn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a huge responsibility on us. Another verse in the Holy Quran makes a reference to this responsibility. See what this verse says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ Allah says, I have offered, we have offered the amana, the trust, that responsibility on the heavens and the earth and the mountains. فَأَبَيْنَ أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا all of these big creations of God, this whole universe, refused to accept this responsibility. Meaning, Allah it, it told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot take this. This amana is too heavy on us. We cannot bear it. minha. Not only did they not bear this amana, this trust, this responsibility, but they were even frightened to bear such a great responsibility. Yes, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some level of perception because you may be wondering, what is this verse saying? The universe does not understand, does not comprehend. Does a mountain comprehend? How is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered it the amana and it refused? Yes, the Holy Quran tells us in one verse, everything in this universe has some perception. وَإِمِّنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Everything in creation does tasbih, glorifies the Almighty God, but you simply cannot comprehend that. Even every single Adam, brothers and sisters, has a level of perception, a level of understanding. Everything in the universe worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we not read Surah Al-Rahman? وَالنَّجْمُ وَالشَّجَرُ يَسْجُدَانِ the plants, the grass, the trees, all of them do sujood. They prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another verse tells us that everything in, you, in the universe does sujood. The mountains, the skies, the sun, the moon, everything in this universe does sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does that mean? That means it submits itself to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overcomes everything. Everything submits to the Almighty God except one being who is so arrogant and defies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered this amana to the mountains, they reject it. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ if we were to reveal this Qur'an and give it to the mountain, not to the human being. If Allah would have revealed the Holy Qur'an to the mountain, what would have happened? لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدْعًا مِنْ خَشَّةِ اللَّهِ You would see the mountain explode, split asunder because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A mountain cannot handle the heaviness of the Holy Qur'an, the power of the Holy Qur'an. 
But then what does this verse say? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have offered this amana to the mountains, to the universe, to the skies, to the heavens and the earth. They refused. Who is the only one who accepted this responsibility? This human being accepted this responsibility. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this human being, how did he honor this responsibility? We'll get to that. What is this amana now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered the human being? Again, the exegetes of the Holy Quran, the Mufassirin have a number of opinions. One opinion says this amana, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered humanity, is the power of the intellect and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us a responsibility to worship Him. Because that's why He created us. Doesn't Allah say, I've not created you, human beings and the jinn, except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That capacity to worship the Almighty God is the amana which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. To freely worship God with your own free will. This is only an amana that the human being has been entrusted with. As for all the other creations, they're programmed. The animals, they're programmed to do what they do. The plants, they are programmed to do what they do. Even the angels. Even the angels who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're programmed to do so. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. Allah and the Quran tells us the angels do not have the capacity to say no to Allah. They cannot disobey. They are programmed. They are given instructions by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can only fulfill those instructions. But as for the human being, he has free will. He can freely decide to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. A second opinion says the amana is the religious rituals and obligations that we have. Such as our salah. Our salah, our prayer is an amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us with. It's a big responsibility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on us. Going to the hajj, fasting, giving charity, all of these are the amanat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third opinion says the amana that God gave humanity is the capacity to achieve completion. The only being who can achieve completion is the human being. Put a chair in the middle of the woods or a desert for thousands of years. Does it achieve completion? No, it only decays. It decomposes. It rots. The only being who has been given the opportunity to elevate himself, to become better, to achieve a higher status is the human being. Whereas when you look at the other creations of God, they are not given this amana this very important responsibility of achieving a higher status, of achieving completion. This is the third opinion. The fourth opinion is one that we derive from the hadith of Al-Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam and a hadith from Al-Imam Al-Rida salawatullah alayhi. In one hadith by Al-Imam Al-Rida alayhi salam, he tells his companions, do you know what this amana is? which we have been entrusted with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed it on our shoulders. Ya ibn Rasulullah, what is this amana? Tell us. He says, this is the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi alayhi. Allahumma salli alayhi. The wilaya of the imam, the wilaya of the ahl al-bayt is a huge responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to humanity. And interestingly, when you look at this verse in Surah Al-Isra, verse 70, in which Allah says, I have honored the human being. What is the verse that comes directly after it? What does it speak about? Allah says, I've honored the children of Adam. We've carried them on land and sea. We've given them from our good rizq, min al-tayyibat. And we have preferred them over other creations. What is the verse that immediately comes after this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ You see the link here? When Imam al-Rida tells us this amana that Allah has given to humanity, 
And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given honor to the children of Adam, what does this honor have to do with? It has to do with the Imam of your time. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ On the day of judgment, we shall call everyone with their Imam. Who did you follow? Who was your Imam in this life? On the day of judgment, you shall be resurrected with that Imam. You shall be called upon with that Imam. In essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Holy Quran, you cannot achieve that karama, that high status, that honor that I have given the children of Adam, except through the Imam of your time. Ask yourself, who is the Imam of my time? And alhamdulillah, the past two weeks, you've had a wonderful series about Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Ta'ala Farajah, the Imam of your time. Al-Imam Radha tells us this amana is the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt. What did the human being now do with this amana? al insan. The human being accepted this responsibility. But what happened? Was the human being honest with this amana? How did he treat this amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him? Unfortunately, the human being treated the amana just like Bani Israel treated the status which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The Quran is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored Bani Israel. Bani Israel was the Jewish nation. The sons of Prophet Ya'qub, his name is Israel. That's another name for this great Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Jewish nation comes from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very clear in the Quran that yes, we did choose them. You know, there is some truth to that chosen people theory, even though they distort it. There is some truth to it. The Quran says, وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ We, at that time, gave them preference over other nations. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a prophet to them. Many prophets of Allah. The most famous of them was Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Allah saved the Jewish nation from Fir'aun, from Pharaoh and his oppression. Allah gave them a div divine book. Allah would even deliver to them their food from paradise. There was a special type of dessert, by the way, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Prophet Musa and his people, they achieved victory over Fir'aun and he drowned and they crossed over the sea and they went towards Palestine. They got lost for a while. For the while they were wandering in the deserts. What was their sustenance? For a long time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring down their sustenance and their rizq from paradise, from heaven. And that's truly amazing. Allah did favor them by giving them a prophet, by giving them the Torah, a holy book. But what did they do? How did they treat this special status which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them? You know what they did? According to one hadith, and the Quran is filled with verses attacking them for what they did. According to one hadith, they would kill 70 prophets from dawn till dusk. 70 prophets. We had many prophets. 124,000 prophets. Most of them were killed by Bani Israel. That's how they treated this amana which Allah gave him. That's how they treated the special status which God endowed them with. This same verse which speaks about the amana to the humanity, to the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing about all human beings. <inaudible> we gave this amana to the human being. And he's up to it. He can handle it. He can accept that responsibility. But what did the human being do? He became zalum. He became oppressive. And he became jahul. Excessively ignorant. This is how the human beings treated this amana. Let's ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, when we look at the history of the human race and we wonder if there were other creations, realize that Allah has favored you. The reason why we should examine our history and the history of the human race and compare ourselves to other creations is to know if Allah has given us a special status. Realize that we have a special status. But with this special status comes 
a heavy price. There is a burden, there is an amana. Tonight, ask yourselves, brothers and sisters, how good have I been to this amana which Allah has given me? Regardless of which definition of the amana we take from the mufassirin, and we accept all of them, whether it's your capacity to worship Allah, does my life revolve around worshiping Allah? Ask yourself this very basic question. Whether the amana is the a'mal, the salah, the siyam, have I been true to this amana? Whether the amana is my capacity to grow, to advance, to achieve completion, have I done that? Whether the amana is the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, how true have I been to the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt? Through my actions, through my words, through my lifestyle, does my lifestyle reflect the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt or no? This is how I know if I've been true to the amana or not. Innahu kana zaluman jahula. But this is the human being. He commits acts of injustice excessively and he is excessively ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a special status. Now this brings us to the next point. So were there any humans before Prophet Adam السلام, or no? This is a very interesting question. And the Imams of Ahlul Bayt were asked these questions by the way. Subhanallah, I tell you there is no subject that our beloved Imams did not cover. Even subjects like these. That today scientists are all proud of themselves, they've discovered something, evolution and the history of human beings. When our Imams were asked about this, they were asked about pre-Adamite human beings. Was there anyone before Prophet Adam For example, in one hadith, which a Shaykh as saduq narrates from Jabir ibn Yazid al-Ju'fi. He was a close companion of the Imams. Jabir says, I heard al-Imam al-Baqir explaining this verse in the Holy Quran. There's a verse in the Holy Quran which al-Imam al-Baqir was asked about. Afa'ayina bil khalq al-awwal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when speaking to those pagans who denied the day of judgment, they're like, you know what, when we die and we become, our bones decompose and they become part of the ground, how is it that God can revive those bones? It's impossible. It simply does not make sense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, did I not create you the first time? Who created you? From nothing. Which is more difficult to create something from some bones or something from absolutely nothing. That's the true miracle of God's creation. Allah is telling them, Do you think we became tired or we became incapable after creating you the first time? Absolutely not. If Allah created you once out of nothing, He can revive you. He can, he can give life to your dead body. He can give life to your dead decomposed bones. That's not impossible for Allah. This is the tafsir of this verse. Because every verse, as you know, has a tafsir, which is an apparent meaning, and it has a ta'wil, a deeper, more inherent meaning. What is the ta'wil of this verse? And Imam al-Baqir tells Jabir in this hadith, Oh Jabir, allow me to tell you, the ta'wil of this verse. Oh Jabir, know that there will come one day, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put an end to this universe. This earth that we see, there will be an end to it. The creation that we see, there will be an end to it. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the people of paradise go to paradise, and the people of hell go to hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new creation. Very interestingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new creation. But this time, this creation, does not have a gender. Al Imam al Baqir says there will not be males and females, just one type of creation, and they will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then here's the powerful point Al Imam al Baqir tells him, Oh Jabir, do you think you're the only human who God created? Do you think your world is the only world which God created? Before you, there was 1,000, 1,000 worlds. A million worlds. And before you there was 1,000, 1,000 Adams. 1 million Adams before you. And you're at the end of that train. 
You're at the end of those worlds and the end of those Adamites. SubhanAllah, a very clear hadith which tells us that before Prophet Adam السلام, there were other human-like figures. In another hadith which also a Shaykh al-Saduq narrates from Muhammad ibn Muslim, from Imam al-Baqir he says, I once heard Imam al-Baqir say that before you there were seven worlds, seven primary creations. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create Prophet Adam and his progeny. This hadith is very clear that the humans that we see today are from the progeny of Prophet Adam, not from any other race. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam and then he created his progeny. Another hadith from Al Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, which Ar Rawandi narrates from Al Shaykh al Saduq, and he narrates this from Al Imam Amir al Mu'mineen. Salam. In this hadith, the Imam was asked, was there any creation before Prophet Adam? What did he answer? The Imam السلام, says there were four types of creation before Adam. Number one was that special type of creation that worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before anything was created in the universe. And that's the light of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, in which Allah created them they used to surround the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah. The second type of creation was the angels. The third type of creation was the jinn. The fourth type of creation, the Imam says, were what is called an nasnas. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam says, an nasnas had a body and a spirit, just like the human being. But they did not have the full mental capacity that we have. They could eat, they could drink, they could do certain activities, but they did not have the brains that we human beings have. Then this nasta, nasnas started to cause mischief on earth. They started killing one another, spilling each other's blood. And that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, I want to create a khalifa on earth. What did they say? The angels had seen this nasnas, this pre-human existence, and they would kill each other, they would spread corruption on earth. They objected to Allah. Oh Allah, why are you creating these creations again? When you see how they're killing each other, they're spilling each other's blood. Why are you creating them? Allah told them, no, 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 this time it's different. I know something which you do not know. This new human being has something which other creations do not have. This human being will be a prophet. Some of them can be infallible leaders. They have that divine knowledge from me. And when they saw the knowledge of Prophet Adam, they were shocked and puzzled. They said, subhanAllah, this creation is different. The capacity of this human being to have knowledge is, an amaz is amazing. We have not seen anything like it before. The point is in this hadith, the Imam clearly says there was a human-like figure before us. So when you have these scientists who are telling you that 500,000 years ago, a million years ago, two million years ago, there were human-like figures. Yes, that's fine, we accept that. And our Imams actually point to that. However, what's interesting, brothers and sisters, is that the Quran tells us we, the current race of the human beings, we have not evolved from those apes or those early homo sapiens, no. Allah created Prophet Adam directly. And there is scientific evidence for this, brothers and sisters. Because how long ago was Prophet Adam present on earth? We don't exactly know. Because for example, we have a hadith that says between Prophet Adam and between Prophet Nuh, you had, let's say, 10 generations. But what exactly is a generation? Today, if you say 10 generations, maybe that's 400 years. But Prophet Nuh السلام, he lived over a thousand years. So 10 generations could be 5,000 years. We do not exactly know when Allah created Prophet Adam and brought him down to earth. But the majority of our scholars estimating from a number of ahadith, 
They say probably, it is very likely that Allah created Prophet Adam about 10 to 15,000 years ago. Science tells us something interesting happened 10 to 15,000 years ago. And scientists are puzzled by this. This is at the end of the last ice age. Scientists, for example, when they examined the fossil record of those early human beings, they discovered that in many parts of Europe, 14 to 15,000 years ago, brothers and sisters, listen to this, this is very important. They realized that about 15,000 years ago, something strange happened. Something mysterious happened. Where the old generation who was living in Europe suddenly disappeared. They went extinct. And then you had a new type of species. Which have distinctly different DNA. So those hunter-gatherers suddenly were replaced by this new mysterious species about 15,000 years ago. It could be the case that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam. All those Neanderthals, the Homo sapiens, what have you, went extinct and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the earth for the new human race. Therefore we brothers and sisters, while we accept many aspects of evolution, there is an evolutionary process. You have animals for example who evolve, they develop more advanced features, like the beaks of those birds, which you know developed and they evolved and they took on different shapes and forms, that happens. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Prophet Adam directly. He is the direct creation of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And evolution does not contradict this in any way. Because scientists have not been able to prove, it's only a theory, that the current human race has evolved from those early apes. That has not been proven by the way. Even though they act as if this, this is a law, this is a scientific law, it's not that way. Yes, there are some evolutionary processes, we see this. Animals getting more advanced. However, there's no such thing as we human beings evolving directly from those apes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam alayhi salam directly. He had no parents, he did not evolve from any species. Yes, he is similar, we are similar to those nasnas or those pre-Adamite human beings or beings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in a very distinct way. And all of the creation that we see today are the children of Prophet Adam. You don't have anything today on the face of the planet from other than the progeny of Prophet Adam. Because the Qur'an, when the Qur'an addresses us in many of its verses, how does the Qur'an address us? Ya Bani Adam! O sons of Adam, O children of Adam, that means we all came from Adam. In one hadith attributed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The Prophet was teaching his companions equality. He told them, my companions, your Lord is one and your father is one. And all of you came from Adam and Adam is from the clay, from the dust. So be Humble, don't be so arrogant. The Prophet says, all of you, وَكُلُّكُمْ adam All of you come from Adam. There's, this is a clear religious verdict here that we have from the Holy Prophet that all of the human race today traces itself back to Prophet Adam salam. And the theory of evolution does not contradict this. What has been discovered so far does not contradict this in any way. In fact, the theory of evolution to a certain extent substantiates these ahadith that we have from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt which tell us there were human-like figures before Prophet Adam salam. and who could know that 14 centuries ago. Today scientists are you know digging up those fossils and they're examining them. But for the Imam salam to say there were thousands, thousands Azams before you, millions of years, who could know that other than the Imams who received their knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now with respect to the theory of evolution, inshallah tomorrow, when we tackle the topic of atheism and how it's related to evolution, we'll mention a few points about the evolution of the human being and the belief in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Let's go to the final point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam What happened after that? How did humanity increase? There are several theories here. For example, you have the Christians and many other Muslim schools of thought. You know what they say? They say, well, when God created Adam and Eve and they came down to this earth and they had all these children, they married each other. The brothers married their sisters. So this is one theory that the Christians and many Muslims from other schools of thought, they accept. And Imam al-Sadiq in one hadith he was asked, in one hadith Zurara asked Imam al-Sadiq, he tells him, oh Imam, how did the progeny of Prophet Adam increase? How did that happen? What happened? Whom did they marry? The Imam told him, what do the people say? Meaning those other schools of thought. What do they say? He says, well, they say Allah revealed to Adam, tell your sons and daughters to marry each other. So the son of Prophet Adam would marry his sister and they would have children. And their children are now cousins and that's how the human race progressed. And Imam al-Sadiq upon hearing this, he became furious. He told them, Ta'ala Allahu an dhalik. How can they accuse God of such a heinous act for Allah to instruct His Prophet to tell His sons and daughters to marry each other? You know what that means? That means all humans and all the Prophets and the Imams and the believers who come from the progeny of, progeny of Adam are illegitimate children. Because a marriage between a brother and sister is not valid. And when you have a child from that, from that marriage, what happens? You've got an illegitimate child. Walad haram. By saying this, God forbid, they are saying that all the prophets of God who came after Adam are, God forbid, illegitimate children. How can they say that? Ta'ala Allah wa andalika aluwan kabira. Allah would never allow such a thing to happen. Especially to the sons of His first prophet, Adam And then the Imam makes an interesting biological reference. The Imam السلام, tells Zurara, haven't you heard of animals when they mate and they don't know each other and then after mating they realize that that was their sibling, their brother or their sister, they feel so ashamed of themselves. Sometimes they take drastic measures which lead to their deaths. Yes, some animals have committed suicide. And science proves this point as well. Science tells us that animals have this strong tendency to avoid mating siblings, to avoid incest. That's why you see an animal, as soon as it matures, what does it do? It flees. It goes away to another place, to another tribe, to another group of animals. It tries to get away as much as it can from its relatives. So it does not end up mating one of those relatives, marrying one of those relatives. He says, when you see the animals are like that. And subhanAllah, the animals, Allah has given them the ability to detect if another animal is their relative. They are able to detect the scent of another animal through their pheromones. They are able to detect if this is a sibling or not. Sometimes it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. In certain conditions it happens. But animals try as much as they can to avoid siblings, to avoid incest. And you're saying that the sons of Prophet Adam السلام, they committed incest. Subhanallah, ta'ala Allahu an dalik. So what happened then? And Imam al-Sadiq gives us the answer very beautifully. He tells us that Prophet Adam السلام, he had 70 twins. When he came down to this earth, every time his wife would deliver, she would deliver twins. So 70 twins, a boy and a girl, how many do you have? 140. When Allah gave him 140 children, that crime occurred where Habil killed, where Qabil killed Habil, where Cain killed his brother Abel. After Qabil killed his brother Habil, Prophet Ibrahim was so disturbed and so disappointed and depressed he had no appetite to have any more children he's like that's it i'm not going to have any children that's enough and then after a while allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him now continue the human race continue having a progeny 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this time, instead of giving him twins like he would normally give him every time his wife would become pregnant, Allah gave him a son, only one son. And his name was Sheath, Hibatullah Sheath. And by the way, the Bible mentions his name is Seth. He is the one who continued the line of Prophet Adam alayhi salam because Habir was killed. So who was the wasi? Who was the successor to Prophet Adam? It was his son Seth. And interestingly, you know what happened? When he told his son Seth that Allah has chosen you to become my successor, he told him, do taqiyya. Keep this a secret. Don't tell everyone because your other siblings will get jealous of you. And then they will end up killing you just like Habil got killed. So keep it to the believers. You know, those who attack Taqiyya and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, Habibi. Taqiyya was there on earth from day one. When Allah told Prophet Adam, when I've appointed Sheath, your son, to be the Imam, to be the Wasi, to be the successor, keep it. Low profile. Don't tell everyone. Because then they will kill him. And the Quran, what does it say about Ahlul Bayt? They are jealous of those who have been favored by Allah. Imam al-Sadiq says, we are the mahsudun. We are the people whom others are jealous of. They are jealous of us. And therefore they attack us and try to kill us. So Allah gave him a son named Sheath. Then he gave him another son named Yafith. The hadith says on a Thursday afternoon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a female from Hur al -Ain. Allah brought down a Hur al -Ain in the form of a human and her name was Baraka. He gave her to who? To Sheath and she was his wife. And the following day on a Friday afternoon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created another female from Hur al -Ain. Her name was Nazila and he gave her to Yafith. So now, these two sons of Adam had wives, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Now some of you say, you know, how is that possible? Well, if Allah created Adam from no parents, you think He can't create the daughter-in-law for Adam with no parents? No, that's possible. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as explained by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. So they got married, they had children. Allah gave Sheath a boy, He gave Yafith a girl. Now these two Children, the son of Sheath and the daughter of Yafith are what? They're cousins now. Well, cousins can marry each other according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how they married each other and that's how the human race continued after Prophet Adam alayhi salam. When we examine this history, brothers and sisters, let's remember the special status that Allah has given us. The amana which we talked about that Allah has placed on the human being. Be true to that amana. Especially in the month of Ramadan in which Allah has given us the best opportunity to expand on that amana, to make the best of that amana, brothers and sisters. So we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciate the history of the human race and how we got here, brothers and sisters. This is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these blessings demand that we in turn Worship the Almighty God and thank Him the way He wants us to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Let's recite this holy verse together, brothers and sisters, five times. There are many in our community, elsewhere in the world, who are ill, who need our dua. Raise your hands in dua so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a speedy recovery. Everyone together. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله 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 اللهم عجل وليك الفرج 
وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب سورة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل